As the nights draw in and the weather turns, having some indoor entertainment can be a godsend. I know it's not everyone's choice, but TV is something lots of people want. You may have already seen our previous video on the TV set up in our van, which is linked up here and in the video description. This mainly covered terrestrial TV through an antenna and satellite TV through a dish. But more and more, we've been using streaming TV. So if you stay with us, we'll talk more about what it is, its advantages and disadvantages, and some ways you can use it. Don't miss any of our regular videos by hitting that subscribe button now. You can also check out our website at explorevan.uk for more details on our vans, trips, and all the products we talk about. So, what is streaming TV? Traditionally, the main way to get TV was commonly known as terrestrial, the signal being sent from a land-based broadcast tower to a TV antenna. Then came satellite, where the signal is broadcast from a satellite and received on a dish. For streaming, or IP TV, the signal is sent over the internet. So why use it? There are some key advantages. One, it could be watched on equipment you already have, like your phone, tablet or laptop, saving you carrying more. There's no need for a TV antenna or dish. It also gives you the chance to watch UK TV pretty much anywhere. You may find you need a VPN or virtual private network. We use ExpressVPN and have found it great. If you want to try it out, you can use the link in the video notes to get 30 days free. The reason we use it is some of the streaming services are geographically linked. So if you're not in the UK, you can have trouble viewing them. So using ExpressVPN not only means our online activity is encrypted, making us safer when using online banking, we can also use it to connect to a server in the UK when we're anywhere in the world. On top of that, we can also use the service to access TV from other countries when we are in the UK. For example, we can use the US version of Netflix just by selecting a US-based server. An ExpressVPN subscription allows you to use the service on multiple devices, so we use it on iPhone, iPad and on our Fire TV stick. Another benefit of streaming TV is that you get a wider range of content, particularly with the many subscription services available. But there are some issues with streaming TV. Overall, the coverage, if you consider Wi-Fi hotspots and cellular coverage, is not as good as terrestrial or satellite if you're using a good terrestrial antenna or have a clear view of the sky for a dish. Your internet connection needs to be good quality, generally at least 2 megabits per second, or you can end up with buffering or low quality pictures. Streaming TV does use a lot of data, so you do need a good data plan to cover it, which can cost a bit. And finally, keeping on top of the apps that you're using, your logins and your subscriptions can be a bit of a pain. But streaming TV does have its place and can be great. So how do you do it? There are four key things you need to stream TV, and we'll look at some options for each of these in a minute. They are an internet connection, a smart device, a screen, and an app. There are lots of different ways to put these four things together, so let's take a look at some of the popular ones. For your internet connection, you could use the cellular connection in a device that you can watch on, such as a phone or a tablet. You could create a Wi-Fi hotspot from your phone or a cellular MiFi, or even a public Wi-Fi hotspot. For more details about the different options on getting internet in your van, you can check out our detailed videos on that subject by clicking on the link on screen or in the video description. As well as a device, if you're using a cellular service, you'll also need a SIM and a data plan. We highly recommend Smarty and use their unlimited service at £20 a month. It's truly unlimited with no throttling and no ties, but you could also get 30 gigabytes for £10 a month and 100 gigabytes for 15 If you want to try it out and get your second month for free, you can use the link in the video description. As it's not a contract, if it doesn't work for you, you can cancel at any time. For your smart device that does the streaming, you can use your phone, tablet, laptop, a smart TV, or a smart box, or a streaming stick like the Chromecast, Roku, or Fire TV stick. For your screen to actually watch the TV, there's obviously the one on your phone, tablet, or laptop, or you could use a TV or a projector. Finally, you need some apps. So, there's a wide choice of apps that let you watch TV in different ways. Here are a few of the more popular ones. Most of the main channels provide their own app available for free, which allows you to stream their live channels and watch on-demand content. 
To help you find what you want to watch, there's a couple of apps I found really useful which consolidate the channels into one app. Freeview I have found the best, but this is not available on all platforms, so TV Player is an alternative. There are also a number of subscription services which have even more content, but obviously you pay a monthly fee. Let's take a look at a few of the options of how you could watch streaming TV. The first and simplest is watching it on a cellular connected device like a phone or tablet that has its own SIM and data plan. You probably already got one of these. So it's as simple as adding the apps. One downside of this is that as you're probably sat inside a van, the cellular signal could be poor or non-existent. And when the phone or tablet goes out of date and stops getting updates and the apps are updated by the channels, some of them might not work, meaning you'd have to buy a whole new tablet or phone. To tackle the signal part, you could choose to use a Wi-Fi or hotspot off another device that can be positioned for a better signal or even have an external antenna. For both these options, screen size could be an issue. Wouldn't it be great if you could take that device and connect it to a TV? Now, there are HDMI leads or screen mirroring casting which will let you show your phone or tablet screen on a TV. Unfortunately, with many of the apps, this is blocked. Here is a list of what I found. Note this may change depending on your connection method or the version of your app. The next option is a popular one, which is to go with a smart TV. This is a TV which comes with apps for streaming services built in. You can connect this to your internet device. This is a simple solution to set up, but does have its cons. As with many smart TVs, you are reliant on the manufacturer to release the latest version of apps, new ones for services as they're launched, or the latest operating system. Sometimes you can be waiting a long time, or as the TV gets old, they may never do it, meaning you have to replace the whole TV if you want the latest apps to work. And our last example is the solution that we use, which is our Netgear router providing internet to a streaming stick, our choice being a Fire TV stick and a standard TV or sometimes our projector. Although it's a tiny bit more complicated to set up, the modular approach works for us. If we want to upgrade the MiFi, streaming stick or screen, we can do this individually. And if anything fails or goes out of support or becomes obsolete, it's just one module to replace. We can use the Fire Stick to make any screen we want smart and we can add pretty much any app we want to it. Here's how we go about setting it up. You get everything you need with the stick. It's around £50, but do look out for special offers from Amazon as they are often reduced. There's a link to buy in the video description. Installation is simply a case of plugging in the HDMI lead, then plugging the stick into this. The stick can be powered from any USB socket. Once the stick is booted up, all you have to do is connect it to your internet connection. Then if it's not already installed, search for the app you want and install it. Here I'm using the TV player app to see what's on and pick a channel. Most of the few view channels are available for free on this app and you can also subscribe per month to add more premium channels. I hope you found that useful. As always, do drop any questions in the comments. Thanks for watching our video and as always, if you have any questions or feedback, please pop them in the comments below. If you find the video useful, please like, share and consider subscribing.